Hello everyone, about 4.30 now on Monday, March the 30th, 2020, and uh, we're going to do a cooking video today, this time showing how my mom makes bread. This right here is a stone grinder? Yes, called a retzel. It's called, it's called a, a retzel? Yep. Alright, so uh, she actually has the grain. Is a hard winter wheat. I've got hard white winter wheat and a hard red winter wheat. Now when you say winter, does that, does that mean that it, it, it the seed was in the ground throughout the winter? Yep. Okay. So that's what you have to use to make bread because of the amount of gluten in it. Okay. You do not want to use a soft wheat. A soft wheat would be one that was growing throughout the summer. Well, it, you can even buy soft wheat here in Tennessee, but Tennessee cannot grow hard winter, winter wheat. Winter wheat. So, so winter wheat is ideal for making bread. That's what like you actual want. loaves of bread that you can slice. With yeast. Anything and you yeast. use yeast. Soft wheat, you use baking soda, baking powder for its leavening. Okay. For a hard wheat, you use yeast. And why exactly are you using a stone mill grinder in, in, instead of just a regular like... Other mill? Yeah, the, the one that... I like the stone grinder because it doesn't heat up the wheat as much as my other mills do. It keeps... So, you can touch this wheat and it's not hot. On my other mill, when you touch the wheat it's actually hot because of the way it pulverizes and so the the theory is that it actually you your nutrient loss that comes from the cooking actually starts at the grinding when you use a regular grinder can, as opposed to a stone yeah. grinder okay it can destroy some of the nutrients so i really like my stone grinder better while this is grinding i go ahead this is a coffee mill and I go ahead and grind flax. I can't grind flax in... Because it's oily. Because of the oil. You can yeah, never, it's oily. Something oily, you cannot put in a flour mill. It will mess these heads up and make them slick. And then you can't grind flour anymore until you've taken it all apart, scrubbed all that off. If you use too much, your bread will be too dense. You can't, you have a percentage of non-gluten products you can use in bread, otherwise you'll end up, it won't really rise and it'll be very dense. Fourth of a cup of, of flax. Flax and a fourth of a cup of chia seed. Okay, so we got a fourth of a cup of flax and a fourth of a cup of chia seed. Yep. Put through, do you put the chia seed in the same coffee mill, coffee yep. grinder? Okay, and then... And uh, so, uh, and altogether, three cups of grain to start with. What do you get from the chia seed? Proteins, fiber. Oh yes, lots of fiber. Yeah, but it's got your Indians actually use chia if they were not going to be able to um, if they were going to be out on the trail a lot and they needed something they could pack up and eat as they go and it wasn't going to go bad on them, your Indians actually used it. So that was like their power bars. Their I cliff bars. That's, that's like their it. cliff bars. Because it does have a lot of protein in it, and it's really good. Okay. Good protein. One of the things, though, with chia, if I was making something without gluten, a lot of people use some dancing gum and bar gum and all that, but when I was making gluten-free stuff, the chia seed almost acted as a binder, like uh -huh. the gar gum and xanthan gum did. If, if you ever get chia seed, put it in water, you'll see how it turns into a right, gel. Right. Well, there's a lot of like uh, chia fruit snacks being sold now, and uh, even uh, chia kombucha tea. And during this time that is going on with the grinding, I'm going to go ahead and start putting the egg the oil, putting my ingredients in my bowl. I'm not going to be helping because this is really her her thing more than anything else. I would just be getting in the way. Um, but 
A lot of people, when they hear baking bread at home, the kind that fluffs up and rises and you can slice and make sandwiches out of it, they think of that as being a very daunting task because you have to have different cycles of kneading and then letting it rise. But uh, there's a way that uh, Mama's found to get around that, and that is the bread machines. Bread machine. There we go. Uh, she actually opened it right as I said bread machine. Good timing. Well, this is... I've got a particular company or bread... Right. Bread, what do they call this? A bread... Um, bread machine. Yeah, but the brand... A particular brand. I particular really like brand. Most. It, it's Mostly because called... it's got two paddles in it. Right. Most of them have a single paddle. The Zojirushi actually has a way that you can set on homemade bread There's how long you want it to knead. You select... You, you hit select and you, you can, can actually program. program it for how dark you want the crust, how long you want it to knead, how long you want it to rise on each rising, and it's just... That's right. It's, it's a really so, it, so nice... So while it's machine. rising, it actually kind of warms it up on the inside, gives it that nice, warm uh, place that it, you know, for it to rise. But the, the problem that we had with the bread that came out of the machine was that the flappers themselves made really big holes. So when you get to the middle of the loaf, you've got these pieces of bread with the big gaps in them. Did you want to tell them about the, uh, the, the, the fantastic deal you got? Because you've got one Zojirushi here, and then another one over there, and then one more... I've got four Zojirushi. ...down here. How did you end up with so many Zojirushis? Do you want to tell them about that? I was in a thrift store. She found them in thrift stores for $15 a piece. I, yeah. <laughs> if you go online, you'll see that's a real that's deal. That's a real deal. They go between $175 to $200. Yeah. Sometimes more. So this, that, is like, this is the Cadillac of bread machines. Yeah. Your other bread machines, whenever they're using, dealing with whole wheat, they will yeah. wear them out a lot faster. Yeah, because most people, when they make bread at home, they're making the white bread. Yeah. So that's what most people yeah. are used to eating. Not so, as good for you, though. Not. Okay. So we're going on to two teaspoons of salt. Yeah, I did two teaspoons two of salt. Teaspoons of salt in each one of those. And this is real salt. Right, so it doesn't have the anti-clumping agents or the iodine that your, your typical table salt yeah. has. So how much oil? Well... I put um, about like that much. <laughs> so you just kind of know this by feel at this point, don't you? Yeah. And that's and a, that's a half a cup, but it's not all the way to the very no, top of the I, half a cup. It would be, I guess, a third of a cup. You put oil in your cup first, and then put the honey in. Okay, that, that way, way the the honey just slides right out of the cup and doesn't right. stick to the sides. It Otherwise, makes it easier to wash. Right. Okay. Otherwise it so you've really got this down to a science, so even down to how to make the dishes easier to manage. So because I'm making two batches, I go ahead and do the oil again before I do the honey on this one. So and then, then you've got your honey and oil. Yep. And honey I'm and oil. Put my water. All right. And about how much water are you going to put in there? Cup and a half. Cup and a half of water, and that's filtered water. Yeah. So this uh, this has actually got ceramic filters in it, so she keeps the top of it full. Then any water that we use for drinking comes out of here. Any water that we're using for washing dishes or hand washing, that can be regular tap water. And then I add my egg. Which actually just went and collected these eggs. Yeah. From under the chickens out there. Actually. Yeah, the chicken was laying on it. It was still warm. It was, it was like like warm. it had just laid. You can't get any fresher. You can't get much eggs. fresher than that. You, I mean, you can look out the window and see the chicken coop where these eggs were laid not more than a few minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. So it's very very fresh eggs. So. So just one egg in each one of these, right? Yep. Okay. Sometimes I do two. It just depends. But it depends on what. We have an abundance of eggs at the time. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta use these up. Let's put two in each loaf yeah. or in each machine. But one egg per loaf is sufficient. Right, right. 
Yeah, and the grinder has been going the whole time, so you've kind of timed stuff now. So you kind of know yep. when to pour in more grain and, and kind of turn away and go add some more ingredients to the to the loaf pans and when to come back and scoop more out. Yeah, I've got to get my flax into this one now. Okay, so you're going to have to add the flax and the chia seeds to this one as well? Yep. The egg busted. Okay. And so, so you start the process just by hand first. Yep. Just to make sure all the salt is off the bottom. Yep. All right, and the kind honey of dissolved is in dissolved there. Dissolved into the water. All right. So I go ahead and I mix it some. All right. So so far, all you've got in there is water, oil, honey, salt, and eggs. Yep. That's it. That's it. Very simple. Yep. Didn't have to put any innates in there. No benzenates or uh, sodium aids. No and enhancements. And no, no enhancements. No vitamins. Mario sodium glutamate. Vitamin D well, tablets. Vitamin. And they will say whole wheat and uh -huh. they'll put what they call dough enhancers in it, which is more gluten, which is not really good for you to have a bunch of more than what already is in there. You can see the chia seed there. Yeah, you can see the chia and the flax. What I'm, that a little okay. what I'm doing is I'm mixing that on into the flour that I'm going to put in the okay. bread machine. So Because chia and flax, whenever you add water to them, they all might want to clump up. So the flour kind of... You want to mix them together before you add any of the other ingredients. Into, yeah, into the water. Into the water, right. So... Okay, so out of those three cups of grain, now you've kind of evenly divided that into the two, the two batches. Is that, that was right? six cups of grain. Oh, it was six it was cups. three cups per... Three cups per batch. Right. Okay. I'm keeping that flour for um, rolling out the bread. Right, right. So you want to hold a little out just, you know, for your rolling surface. Right. And uh, what we were saying before is that... Uh, you only have you only you only do one rising, right? And then you take it out and allow the second rising in the pan. Correct. So a lot of bakers will say that you must, you absolutely have to do three risings, but you found that this third one is not entirely necessary. Right. So I don't do three risings. I do two. And she has made a ton of bread, so yeah. Just two risings. Okay, now I'm going to put a little dip in there. Okay. So I can put the yeast. Okay, so tell us a little bit about yeast, because that's something that's misunderstood a lot, because I know it's got a shelf life. Some people will put it in their cabinet like for a year and a year later, and they try to use it, and it's not any good. This instant yeast is very forgiving. I love really? this instant yeast. And because can you just buy that? Is that typically something you can find at a grocery store? Well, Sam's has it in the amount that I like to get it. I'll show you what it looks like before I put it in. I open it up and put it in this and keep it refrigerated. That way it does keep it for a very long time. And it comes in, what, like a bag? It comes in, at Sam's, it comes in this okay it's a block so it's oh it's a vacuum sealed block yeah. okay and that, that is very keep, solid yeah and that will keep for a very long time so as long as the air like doesn't that. get to it it'll stay like that for a while yeah and then once you break the seal you need to keep it refrigerated yes and after it's refrigerated how long does it last you know one time i took some and you know how often we went to Ferndina. right i took some down there and I was making some bread. And then I left it there, not thinking. And when I went back, it was still there. And I made bread again, and it was months later. And that yeast still worked. Okay. So, so it, really it's actually pretty long. forgiving then. Yes. All this right. is very forgiving. So I really like using it. Some of your yeast you actually have to activate. Instant yeast you do not. The other ones you have to get it into um, honey. 
and activate it before it will actually start doing yeah. So if you want to avoid all that complication, just get the ones that say it says instant yeast. Yes, and the other thing with any yeast though is you do not want to mix salt and yeast together. It kills the yeast. Okay, but there's salt like as part of the ingredients in there, so it's right gonna... Right now, yeah, but if you notice, they're not together. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So that's why you're adding it last on yeah. top of the flour. Yeah. So that it's not in direct contact with the salt. Yeah. Okay. So wow, that is a lot more complicated than I thought. It will. Um, It'll kill it. Salt will kill yeast. Will kill the yeast. Yep. All right. So now you've got all of that together, and you're putting it into the machine, and going to start the mixing. Well, it will warm up first. Okay. But what it does, when I said it, it'll do like a pre-warming before it does anything. And I've already got that programmed in here. And what I've got it, I'll select course. Whenever you see this go through, it's going to pop through all these till it gets to where I want it, which is homemade. I'm at the homemade, and it's at memory one because that's where I have all the program for what I'm doing right now, memory one. You've got three different programs you can put in this, but I've got it under memory one. And now I'll hit start. Yeah. It's going to tell what cycle it is up here. Where it starts kneading, it'll say knead. Whenever it's rising, it'll say rise. So it'll tell you right there what. Okay, these, you've got to scrape the sides. Because if you don't, and you've cooked your bread. Oh, it looks like it's alive. It doesn't get kneaded into your bread if you don't scrape the sides. So you have to do that. It's okay. also an opportunity because, like I said, I don't measure mm -hmm. the amount of flour I put in this. If I needed to add more flour or if I needed to add water, I can tell right now if it's going to be too dry, which this one is, so I need to add a little bit of water. And now that's just something you learn from experience. You can't really teach that. Right. So you're just adding it to the corners. Yeah, get mixed in a little bit. Yeah, that's doing nicely now. So it's almost done kneading. Okay, what you want to see, see how this is starting to form? It, it doesn't look all dry, but it's starting to form into a ball. Uh huh. And that means the elasticity. Uh -huh. It's starting to really get there, and that's what you're wanting is some elast elasticity. Okay, so you're using aerosol pure coconut oil. coconut oil. And bread, if you do not put a lot of good oil on your pans, it will stick like glue. In just a second, it's going to go, right now it says rise one, it's going to punch down, go to rise two in like two more minutes and that's where you pull it out let's let them see what it looks like with it risen yeah yeah it's kind of got that loaf of bread look to it yep puffed up on the top okay so i'm gonna go ahead and pull this one okay and get it out and this is a nice this pan is nice and warm that bread machine has done its job keeping the pan nice and warm so it's it rises nicely. All right, so the uh, the sheet that you're putting it on, that uh, extra flour that you had there at the stone grinder, yep. you just poured that out right there. It was in that pan. Yep. Just poured that out on your, your sheet there. And what is this sheet? This is a silicone sheet. That silicone? I, it's really a baking sheet, but I use it for a, a board. To shape your loaves? Yeah. See, this way my paddles are not going to bake into my bread. Which if I left it in there, that's what would happen. You'd have your paddles down in your bread. Right. Be nice if they finally came up with a bread machine that actually retracted retracted the flappers back down. But that yeah. would be so complicated to do that. I can yeah. only imagine it'd be like a lot of little actuators and hatches that pull back, and so much stuff to break. And yep. Yeah. 
I, it doesn't bother me really to have those in there, but I have found that even so, it's when you pull and shape the bread, it actually makes a nicer loaf of bread. It comes out. You got three quarters of a pound there. Yeah, and but it'll be four of those. That's what I'll get off of each okay. one of these. That's whenever you do this, you kind of want to stretch it and work with it a little bit. It actually makes a nicer loaf of bread. If you, if you don't do that, then you could get bubbles. Yep. I think is that right? And wasn't there was a time when you first started making bread, you would do three strings of it and braid it. Yeah. Just to keep the bubbles out of it. But mm -hmm. this this turns out to be just as good. Yep. But you want to almost manhandle it some to try to make sure mm -hmm. it doesn't have the. Okay, so you've taken the ends and folded them underneath. Yep. I'm forming a loaf okay. to go into. And then that just goes down in there. And everything that you just did there, you just do it in a larger scale for the bigger loaves? Right. Yep. The bigger loaves would be in a pan like this one here. Yeah, this is, that is a loaf pan. This is the, the big sandwich loaf Yep. right here. Exactly like that, just... Larger scale. And so that would be two pounds instead of each one of these being one pound. That would be like two pounds. Oh, I'm just noticing right there next to the stove is a one that you finished yesterday. Yeah. Was that yesterday when you made that? Not or good. a couple of days ago? That one I pulled out. Of that's, the a, that's a good example of the way they look after they're yeah. done right there. So yeah. We'll get to see it when it comes out of the oven too. So this last pound, you're going to divide it out into four for... Hamburger buns. Yep. Right. Okay, so that is the hamburger bun shape right there. Yeah, you want it to be pretty. So I'm trying to form it to be pretty. And it's going to go on this pan. I'm going to make eight hamburger buns. See this whole tucking action where she's taking the sides and like putting it underneath and then making that smooth top. That's very basic for making a lot of things. Because yep. it'll rise up and yeah. be pretty. But you want it. People eat with their eyes. Okay, now it's time to get out the other one. This has been warmed. It's like a warming. It's not yeah, hot. It's, it's not real warm in What there, you right? want with not yeast, hot. you don't want your oven more than 120 degrees. If it's more than 120 degrees, you've killed it and it won't rise anymore. Okay. So 100 to 120 degrees. And my oven, I, I see I can even touch in here, right. but I have a warming setting on here. Uh -huh. And it will warm and keep it warm in there for me so those will rise nicely. So that is number eight. Eight hamburger buns. And next thing is the tortillas. And you're actually measuring out the dough for the tortillas too, aren't you? How much, are you, how much is going each one of those? It's not quite a fourth of a pound. It's it's right Just there. A little okay. All right. So with that little less than a quarter of a pound piece of dough, and uh, this is our tortilla press here. Yep. And we had to plug that in and preheat it. Are there any kinds of settings that you can do on this thing? Nope. It's pretty much just plug it in and it heats up. Yep. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, you have to work fast. Yeah. You want to put it towards the back. Okay. And there it is. No, it's not. It's not done yet? Nope. Okay. Now you turn it. Press it again. Okay. So you flipped it over? I'm trying to get it evenly um, pressed. Uh huh. And you have to. So do you that. kind of like rotate it a little bit. Right. Okay, now you've got it left in there. And it's cooking. It's cooking. Okay, about how long? Uh, count to 20. Really? That quick? 20 seconds? Well, and then I'm going to flip it. Okay. But see how it's already starting to brown some? Oh, yeah. yeah so I see it browning right there. Yeah. So that's about... 
you don't want to overcook these, then they'll become crackers. Right. But you've got a one that you can sit on a stovetop, too, that's like cast iron that you sit it over a burner? That is for corn tortillas. Oh, okay. See, that has started to brown. I don't know if you can see it, but that's done. Okay, so then you just put it on a towel. Yep. Is it really flexible? Does it feel like you can make a tor uh, burrito out of that? It does. Yep. It's got some good bend to it. All right, so you're just going to keep going just like that until, until all these are gone. Now, if you press too hard, mm -hmm. what happens is they lace. Lace. Well, they break up. I call it lacing. But, um... So that one looks like it's got a little more dough to it. It's, it's spreading out a little bigger. Yeah. I may have measured too little bit of a um, piece of dough, but, I mean, I don't really Oh, it's, it's actually... Yeah. I don't it's really care to have super big um, tortillas. This is something I've actually done before. I've helped with this, so you might have to step me through it. Okay. But I'm going to try making one of these tortilla shells now. You saw how I laid it towards the... Okay, so you lay it towards the back. Yep. Smash quickly. you got to move fast. Okay, open it. Peel it off. Turn it upside down. Is that right? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Smash. Okay, that's, you're going to lace it. See? Uh, that's what I was I talking about. I messed it up. I messed it up. It. Is that, is that, it's not usable. You can't really do it. No, you can still it. use it. No, I'll use this for dumplings. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's, you're lacing it more. See? But, that's Oops. okay. <laughs> this really is something you have to, you have to just kind of get a feel for it. Okay, now do I leave it on there for the 20 yeah. seconds? Yeah, because it needs to cook now. All right, well, can I try it again? Yeah. Okay. I can make dumplings out of the ones you mess up on. <laughs> So you place it near the back. Yep. Close it. Yep. Press it. Yep. And up, then, up, 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 up. Okay. Okay. Now, you peel, peel it. it. Flip it. Uh, I ripped it with my fingers that time. Yep. Okay, and then... Down. Down. Okay, up. Up. Turn partly. Down okay. again. You're trying to get it even is what you want to do. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, no, that's where my finger got it. Yeah, okay. that's okay. All right, just let it go now. No, I just let it cook. Yep. I think I, I think I actually cooked one. Second try. Second try. <laughs> I remember doing this before. Why am I so bad at it now? How many years ago was uh, well, it? Well, yeah, that's fair enough. Okay. It's a few years ago. A few years ago. It's amazing these don't have and have to go in an oven or anything. They're just they're done. Yep. They're you're, done. you're flattening them and cooking them at the same time. Yep. Oh, you laced it a little more. Oh. That one's gonna be another. Okay, there's there's a brown yeah. right there. Right. Yeah. That's kinda of what you're looking for. Yeah, and just another couple minutes couple seconds and Okay, it, well it I said second try, but okay. Th this was also a failure. So let's go with third try. Okay. They say third try's the charm, right? Yep. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. That one's done. All right. Yeah. All right. Here you go. Let's do this. Yeah, look at all the more tries you have left. <laughs> yeah. Well, we want to be able to make some burritos. Mash it quick. you got to be ready. Okay. Now up, up. Now turn. Okay. Okay, now up. Flip. No, not all the way. Okay. Up. Down. You have to move fast because it, it starts cooking that fast. Okay, you're good. Let it down. Just let it cook now? Yep. There you go. You got it. I got Did I do it on the third try? Yep. You third try. It. Third try. I did it. There you can see my, uh, my first in years a uh, really well done tortilla <laughs> shell on top of the two failures right there there they are all fluffed up and ready to go into the preheated oven i'm leaving room 
Looks good. Right. There you go. Yeah. So they they just came out of the oven and now they're on the cooling rack. And that's you see there's a little bit of a gap right there. So the air is able to flow around it and, and dry all sides. And uh, hamburger buns just came off as well. They're burning your fingers, aren't they? You need a mitt. You want me to hold the pan for you? Okay. Okay. Well, I know that may seem like it took a long time, but uh, trust me when I say the results are very much worth it. So um, I think this is a good way to go ahead and end out the video um, with a piece of fresh, fresh baked, fresh ground whole wheat bread with honey and, and butter on it. Wow. Mmm. <laughs> well, you just can't get any, any better tasting or more wholesome than this right here. <laughs> Thank you so very much. This is great. Guys, if you've enjoyed this, go ahead and hit the thumbs up like button. <laughs> Leave some comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to ring the bell icon so you'll turn on notifications. And uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one.